What's up? Dreamers, today I'm going to be sharing my testimony with you, a little bit of my story, how I came to know Jesus and my creative journey as well to find out how I got here. I think a lot of people have asked to sort of fill in all the blanks and all the details, so here we go. So let's start from the school days where I looked like this and I found school really difficult because I was very much into art and drama as well and I just wanted to create and do things that were creative and I found maths really hard, science really difficult and I can remember my teachers would always say to me this is not an art class, this is not an art class. All the backs of my books had drawings and doodles on and I was always asked to sort of draw things for the walls for school like this and I can remember when I got to sort of GCSEs and A-levels my results were not good. I left school with not good results and I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I had no idea where I was going, uh, what a career looked like. I didn't think I wanted to go to uni and do more school and more work because I had such a bad time already. I've also only got one or two friends that I still speak to from that school time. I don't necessarily remember it as a positive experience. But outside of school was where I really f started to find myself thriving and excelling and that was through dance. It was also through things like free running. I used to do like flips and tricks and train in the gym quite a lot and the dancing was taking me to do um, underground battles and things like that. I was part of a hip-hop dance crew. Here they are, the boys, and I loved these guys so much. They were my brothers, and we went through a really interesting time where we found ourselves sort of together, and we would dance together, and we thought we were so cool, and we didn't let anyone join our group. We were so cool, and we would basically go to clubs just to sort of dance and show off and then leave and sort of hang out all night long on the roads and in the street and that sort of thing. And they weren't necessarily a negative impact on me. I actually think they were positive. They sort of kept me out of trouble and kept me um, maybe going places that I didn't want to go or get, hanging out with people I shouldn't be hanging out with. Like these, we were so close and we were so tight. But I still had no idea what I wanted to do with my life or where I was going or what my purpose was. Alongside the dancing jobs, I was also picking up some other random jobs because I was trying to work out what I was into. I helped on a building site. I worked behind a bar. I was just doing random stuff and nothing was really sitting right. I got fired from one of those and I was like, what am I doing? Where am I going? Also, that was the year that YouTube kind of blew up. And I remember following this sick dance crew called the Philippine All-Stars who were just sort of clearing up at all the competitions back then. And I was so pumped watching their videos that I decided to go and train with them. So I flew to the Philippines. I'd saved up a bit of cash from all these jobs and random stuff I was doing. I was like, that's all I know I want to do is dance right now. So I'm going to do that with the people that are the best in the world. So I just went and loved it. Um, but also, while I was out there, my parents, who are Christians, um, put me in touch with a filmmaker and missionary who lived out there. And I went to stay with him as well. And we got on really well. And this was sort of the first major seed that was sown in, I think, me coming to Jesus. Because this couple, um, they were not only on fire for Jesus, but they were creative and they were missionaries and I funny, I was like, wow, like this is a really interesting life to live. This is nothing like anything I've ever seen. I thought of Christianity as basically for the people who were kind of needy and obviously my parents were looking after a lot of people in their church and I was like, it's for, you know, them, it's for the, the weak, basically. But I remember leaving the Philippines impacted by a country and by the people I stayed with as a place where God was exciting and joyful and adventurous and a bit wild. And I knew that I believed in God at that time, but I was a bit like, okay, okay. Also, while I was there, that filmmaker asked me to make a music video for his niece. Now, she is called Moira de la Torre. This is what she looked like back then. And this is what she looks like now. Off the back of that music video we made, um, soon after that, she actually got signed and is huge in the Philippines right now. And she's great and lovely and loves Jesus. So check her out. I'd also made some other films with my dance crew and people were saying to me, you should go and do something like this at uni. You should do media, creativity, film, that sort of thing. And so 
I did. I signed up to a uni course that was sort of very creative. There was sort of animation, film, photography, and that was at Westminster Uni in London. And I went off to uni in London. And this is where it got serious. My first semester of uni was not good. I was back doing work, which I was not good at and bringing back these horrible memories and I was sort of failing and it was really dark. Everyone just wanted to go out and get smashed like every night and I that wasn't really my scene and I missed my boys who I was dancing with and I missed my family who were all just so like happy and positive and it was just not good. I was living in this really random house above a chicken shop and there was a lot of sort of dark, strange stuff going on in there as well at the time. And I was just getting confused and I was getting really, really lonely and really sad. I finished up my assignments as quick as I could and went home to my parents and I thought, Do you know what, I don't think I'm going to go back to uni. I think that's the end for me. But while I was at home, I remember going back to my parents' church and remembering the warmth, remembering the joy and seeing everyone sort of thriving. And it struck me, I was like, I'm missing something. I'm doing something wrong here. I'm doing this in my own strength and I'm feeling lonely and I'm feeling disappointed. I'm Something isn't quite right here. So I sat down with God and I was like, okay, let's make a plan. I'm gonna go back to uni and I'm gonna do things differently. I'm gonna find a church. I'm gonna go to the Christian Union I'm going to find some friends. I'm going to read my Bible every single day. I'm going to start fasting and praying. And I'm going to give you, this is how arrogant the prayer was. And I'm going to give you one month to change my life. And then I will decide if I'm going to be all in or all out. Okay, that's what you've got. As if, you know, I can just like tell God how it's going to happen or something like that. I ended up falling into a great crowd of Christians at the uni, including this guy here. His name was Samu. You can check him out. He is now a pastor in his church in Finland. And we began basically staying up late and watching YouTube videos, again, YouTube, about preachers and pastors and they were just talking about the word and talking about Jesus and I was just sort of soaking it all up during this time and I can remember one night we were watching this video and it came up and it was Todd White becoming love. I remember the name of the video. Here's a clip. So the mission statement of the gospel is for you to become what love looks like, what love talks like, what love acts like. You cannot go wrong if you walk in love. You will not be rejected if you walk in love. <laughs> After seeing that video, I felt so stirred and my heart began to burn. And it must have been a couple of days later, I was kneeling at the end of my bed, tears streaming down my face. And I was saying, Jesus, I don't care if I earn a single penny for the rest of my life. I now know my purpose and it's to serve you and it's to glorify you. Come and make a home in my heart. And that was me being set on fire. Yes, I was a believer beforehand, but that was where I made a commitment and I was 100% all in burning for him. I'm an all in or all out kind of guy. And it was only like two weeks into the month thing that I gave God to change my life. It was like two weeks in and I was seeing all kinds of miracles and it was like the best term of uni that you could have. I went from the worst to the best and so many things happened after that. I actually became the president of the Christian Union and we all moved into a house together and we just worshipped every night and it was an incredible year. Actually, I spent so much time doing Jesus stuff. It's a miracle that I came out the other end with a degree and I was really into the sort of the film side of things and work, working out sort of where my place was in video and film and still not entirely sure. I was still dancing and doing other creative stuff as well. And I began shooting wedding films and I began still doing some dancing. I did a lot of extras work and I actually landed a really cool job with Disney and I was like a stand-in dancer for Johnny Depp and Chris Pine on a Disney movie called Into the Woods. These are just some clips of me at work back then. And whilst being on that set, that is when I knew that I wanted to be the director, the director. The di I didn't want to be the dancer. I didn't want to be the cameraman. Like all of these other things that were sort of clouding that experience, I was like, I want to be the director because it really impacted me how the atmosphere and the tone the director can set for a whole movie set. 
But no matter how he walks onto the set, there's something about that, something that he carries that means everyone's going to feel that same thing that day. And I thought that was really powerful and also really spiritual. And that was really interesting to me. Um, it wasn't a super great time. I'd say that was a, a rockier time in my faith that I was sort of finding my place. Um, I had also, um, before going into that, had a really bad experience with a housemate of mine who I thought was like one of my best mates, but turned out really wasn't. A little bit of sort of backstabbing going on there. And I was a bit sort of hurt. And I was had some questions about sort of church and how to do church and that sort of thing. But that at, in the end, I think that sort of broke apart a lot of the religion and a lot of the ego that maybe I'd carried before. Whereas now I feel like I don't. So even though it was a sort of rocky year, I came out the other side knowing what I think church should look like and knowing what true faith looks like um, and was better for it. And that is when I got stuck into a great church in East London and absolutely loved it and really began to sort of just calm it down and mature a bit more. And I began to sort of pursue this film thing. And also that was around the time that I met my wife. Now, that is a whole nother video. I'll put it in the cards um, because that is a crazy sort of miracle testimony, wild and radical. Um, and I would definitely recommend checking that out because it's very sort of supernatural as well and God did some crazy things. But to sort of round it up, I came from a place where I wasn't sure about my purpose and I wasn't sure where I was going or what I was supposed to be doing. And now I'm at a place where I know my purpose and I know my calling and it's to glorify him and point people towards him. And that is what I'm going to be doing. And he's given me sort of these skills in creativity to do that in storytelling, in video and other sort of creative stuff that I'm up to. And that's how I'm going to do it. So yeah, right now, if you are struggling with your purpose, if you are a creative person, if you're wondering where am I going and what am I doing, the answers can be found in Jesus. And it's it's so much simpler than I think we try and make it out to be. And you don't need to know what you're doing for your whole entire life today. It's a slow unraveling process. I 10 years after giving my life to Jesus, I'm still you know, unraveling the things that he has for me and working out which direction I'm going. You don't need to know the answers right now, but you do need to know that he is for you, that he has a plan for you and he has a purpose for you and it is great. So check out the video of how me and my wife yet met. That was like four or five years ago. And you are wonderful. You are beautiful. Jesus loves you. Peace.